service today. I am so happy to spend these moments with you just sharing out of my heart uh, what God is doing in our lives. And uh, I hope it's an encouragement to you today as we take these moments and look to God and look to his word. I want to thank you for um, just uh, the moments we can spend together. I was really encouraged this week. I got a couple of Easter cards of just people to us talking about their journey. In fact, some can't even look at uh, this service today because they said they don't have a computer. But they said, you know, Pastor, thank you for the, the, the communication you've been sending as a church and we love God. And we're going to we're just going to celebrate um, even through social distancing. And uh, we just wanted to send our prayers and our offerings and our mission money because we love God and we want to continue to see God at work. And I thought, wow. What an encouragement that was to me. And so I want to thank all of you for your generosity as we continue to receive your online giving and, and, uh, and your mail and your donations and, and your support. And just uh, thank you because, you know, we continue to support our missionaries and our mission opportunities. Some are asking about uh, the things that are going on with uh, coming up with uh, Mexico. And we're still not sure what lies ahead with all that. We're just going to put that in God's hands. And so let's continue to pray and serve and let's continue to give because, boy, we still need to pay uh, uh, and, and, and pray for everyone around us and continue to make uh, uh, all we can here at the local church uh, uh, happen. And at the same time, we want to love everyone we can for Jesus. You know, today I, 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 I love Easter Sunday. One of the things I... You know, as we've been celebrating our, our 40th year of ministry this year, I love sharing these words. He is risen. And everyone just roars back, he is risen indeed. And I just want to say that to you because I, I know in my heart that, you know, he has risen. And um, it's a time of celebration, both here and around the world, no matter where people are. We can just remember that he has risen. He has risen indeed, and um, when Jesus was here 2,000 years ago, uh, he, we're sort of a risen Savior. He did some amazing things. I mean, he fed five, over 5,000 people on a happy meal. He calmed the seas. He healed the sick. He touched the blind. And then that last week, and, you know, around here, our staff has been, like a lot of other people, just kind of reflecting on Holy Week and what that looks like. And, you know, each day there was something that Jesus did. Wednesday, he you know, on the Holy Week, he, he uh, just got alone, and there's not anything written in, in the Gospels of what Jesus did. But then Thursday, right, we, he uh, spent the day in different things, but we know he shared supper, he washed the feet, and then he was in the garden. And then Friday, we know that his death on the cross, and then, as the old preacher said, Sunday's coming, and we know that with that, um, Jesus Filled his words. He is risen, just like he said. So here we are, Easter Sunday. It's a it's a day of emotion. It's excitement. We used to getting together. It, it's the opposite of social distancing. It's a time of getting together with the church family. It's a time of giving. It's a time of of sharing what Christ has done. You know that hasn't changed. You know, I see a lot of acts of kindness and love and sharing. Uh, and, and, and even in the midst of social distancing, people are still sharing and loving. Now, we can't do it the same. But it wasn't the same 2,000 years ago. I was thinking about it as I was preparing my thoughts. You know, yeah, we might not be able to do it, uh, some of the things we're used to and maybe having what we've made into a holiday of, of, of maybe the same uh, getting together and uh, maybe dying the eggs and Easter egg hunts and all the other stuff. But, you know... Christ, what Christ has done, the most important things, we can celebrate that. Loving each other, loving God, the celebration of who he is and how we can love each other, what well, hasn't changed. And for the first followers of Jesus, I, I believe it was even more emotional and exciting when they realized what Jesus, his words came true. I don't believe they could ever comprehend what Jesus did. And, and, and I, I believe um, later that day when Mary actually, as we will talk about in a moment, comprehend what Jesus actually shows up in, 
It changes everything. So today we're going to consider not only how Jesus encountered Mary and the disciples 2,000 years ago, but how Jesus encounters us today and, and look at a couple of ways how we can experience all of Easter, all of the resurrection, right where we are. And when I think of the resurrection and Easter, I don't know about you, but I want all of it for me. I want all of it for you. I want all of it so that we can touch a world that right now, uh, not just the COVID-19 and, uh, and all of what's going on with that, um, but so much more. People need to know that Jesus loves them no matter what. So today, let's look at two ways to experience the resurrection. Um, I had two thoughts as I look at this scripture. First, don't just sneak a peek at the resurrection. Let's really think about what really happened deeply. And secondly, I want us to experience it. And once we experience it, to share it. Tell our journey. Tell our story. So our two thoughts I want us to kind of uh, look at of how the early disciples experienced it and what happened there and how we can also join in today. So if you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to turn with me to John chapter 20. Uh, and we're going to read the, the first 10 verses uh, today together. Beginning in verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the tomb had been removed, the stone had been removed from the entrance. And so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they had put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the stripes of the linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, and as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. And he saw and believed. And I love that phrase. He saw and believed. They did not understand from the scripture what Jesus had to, that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying or to their homes. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. So what is the first thought of this scripture that we have to deal with today? First, if we're going to experience all of it, let's, let's don't just sneak a peek at the resurrection. Let's think about it really deeply. And we see that as the disciples got to the tomb, as, as, they, as, they, as, they, as, as, they, as John writes, as they got in and they looked in, they saw that Jesus wasn't there. They saw that nothing was disturbed. And they saw that something happened that they can't really understand. And so I love the one translation. In other words, they, they kind of sneaked a peek in and it went, whoa. And it says the other disciple in the author's John says it here, he saw the, the, the clothes laying there. And, and, and the, word, the word Saul describes, he was able to see the, the, the physical objects, but yet he wasn't really quite sure what he was, was really able to comprehend. He wasn't quite sure what was going on. Do you think that kind of somewhat sums up for us sometimes? We see things, but we don't see them clearly. We don't see them fully. We, we see the resurrection of Christ, but yet we're not really sure all what that means. We, we see the pictures of cross and the empty tomb, but we don't really get the full picture. They, they don't. It's, it's really kind of hard to comprehend. And, and, and with all that God has for us, how, how, how much God really loves us. So perhaps that's where maybe you might even be here today with all the things that maybe are going on in our lives and our world, that God still loves every one of us. We see it, but we don't fully comprehend how much he loves us and cares for us even today. And perhaps that's part of the resurrection message. My prayer is for each one of us to, 
to grab a hold of this morning. He loves us. He sees you. He loves you. Don't just peek at it. Get a little deeper. Don't just notice the symbols and the pageantry. You know, and that's our prayer today. See, and think about it for a second. You know, that's why as followers of Christ that we hold on to the resurrection of Christ. That's why we love singing the song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because He Lives, All Fear Is Gone. Because I Know He Holds the Future Just Because He Lives. And as we continue to go through the scripture, we see that, that uh, Simon Peter came in and followed him into the tomb. And he notices, it says, he, the word is, is that he, he saw, and the word is theorized. It means he, 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 he thought deeply. And he saw the, the cloth lying there, and he saw them in such a way that he knew that, you know what? It, it, it was an unusual thing. It was a God thing that, that everything was laying there. It was like Jesus was a mummy, and it was gone. So it was a, it was a God moment, the only way that Jesus could have not disturbed those clothes. When I was thinking about it, I said, like, wow. So as they begin to think that through, as they begin to think and ponder that deeply, deeply, the resurrection began to became, became more meaningful for them. So just don't peek. Consider deeply what, what really happened with the resurrection. And here's the key, until we believe it. And until you begin to understand and believe it, like John, the other disciple, then we begin, it becomes, becomes ours. It becomes, and, and something happens. And when John saw the, the claws lying there a second time, something happened in John. Because it says, then John came back in. And, and what happened to John? It says, he began to perceive. He began to understand. It said, John saw. And that word, I believe, is, is, is been, when he saw, he began to perceive, he began to understand, there began a, a, a glimmer of faith. That Jesus is who he says he is. He began to put his faith in, in Jesus and his words that he is the living word. And that simple faith experience began to help him to trust in Jesus. He trusted in Jesus' words and, and life, and that became his life. And I think that's the same thing for us. I must trust enough. And Jesus is saying, I can trust you. I, I, I can trust him enough to let him into my life and to begin to let him to make those changes he can make. To replace my anxiety with peace. To replace my despair with joy. To replace my hopelessness with hope. And when I trust him with my life, he can begin to do things that only God can do. Can we do that? Can we trust the one who died on the cross for our sins and rose again by faith? Trust him. In our lives, can we do that today? Don't just peek at the resurrection this morning. Would you, would you, would you look at it this morning a little deeper? So somehow you have that resurrection faith that you can, with John, say, I believe. I believe. And when we experience that resurrection story within our lives, something happens. Something happens. See, he saw, believed, and then they went back to their homes and they began to share. Later on in, the, in, the, in verses 10 to 20, we see there's this dialogue now with Mary Magdalene and Jesus. And I'm not going to read all that, but I like to go to verse 17 where it says, And now Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. And he has said these things to her. You know, she saw the resurrected Lord and she told her friends all about it. She couldn't keep the good news to herself. It's kind of like, you know, as parents and grandparents, we can't, we can't, we can't hold the, the news when we have children, can we? We can't hold the news when something amazing happens to us. I don't know when you come to know Christ. I don't know when I came to know Christ. I couldn't stop telling others. And, and, and for me, I, I still can't stop telling others what Christ has done for me. See, in the same way, we need to share the good news and tell others of the resurrection of Jesus. You know, I, I love the stories of people like uh, Mr. Hines of uh, Hines Ketchup. They, at one time, he was, he was challenged by a friend, and he said, Hey, you know, I, I know you're a wonderful uh, man, and I know, I understand you follow Christ, but I, I 
really don't know what, how you share your faith. And he said he went home that night and was really challenged. And so for the days ahead, he asked God to show him how he could love and share his faith with others. And they said, the story is told that in the days ahead, that he began to pray. And within a period of time, he got to tell his story. And from that, over 267 stories of God's love was recorded of people who came to know God through Mr. Hines and his stories about Jesus' love. See, I believe the resurrection stories of God's love, we don't have to peek at it, we, we have to think it through, and then we need to share our stories, and God begins to do the rest. So how do we do this? See, it happened with Mary Magdalene, it happened with Mr. Hines, it can happen with us. We begin with hope. Have you ever been discouraged? Felt broken, beat up. You know, I, I know that the disciples felt that 2,000 years ago. We might even feel that now with all the things that are going on in our world, in our country, and things around us. Maybe you feel there's almost no room for the resurrection story, but I want to tell you there's always room for this story. God always resurrects. Remember that God didn't send his son in the world to condemn the world, but it, through him. He came to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son to love you and me. He sees us. He knows us. He loves us. Secondly, he's, he can help us step into his love and experience his light. But we need to stop holding on to the fears and things that it's so easy. I've been listening to a lot of folks and experienced a little bit of myself. There's a lot of fear that goes on because of all the things we listen to. Day after day, the newscast and all the things we read. We've got to take a break from some of that. And find the positive things of reading God's word, spending time in prayer, turning on the positive things and, and, and exchanging that for the things that sometimes are just going to bring the fear back to you. And, and get with people and, and call or video cat, whatever you're going to do to, to turn that around. And remember, number three, Nothing, nothing is wasted in the kingdom of God. Jesus said that we we're going to have troubles, and, 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 but he's going to be with us. And remember, all things work together for good, as it says in Romans 8, 28, who are well, called according to his purpose. He has a purpose in all these things. And, and lastly, live in resurrection hope. We just have to live in resurrection hope because that's what this day is all about, is the resurrection that he gives us hope. And the one who, he says, and he said to the woman, he says, I am the resurrection and life. And the one who believes in me will, who, in me will live even if he dies. We'll have life. So let me ask you, what do you believe in this morning? What do you believe God wants to do this morning with you? May we each find resurrection faith that John found at the tomb. If not simply, just ask God to help you to, to, to discover what he has for you today. And, and he will guide you and lead you in ways you won't believe. There's no better way to experience the resurrection faith than simply to go right for it. Don't peek at it. Go right for it. I close with this thought. Last week we were doing some safe distancing with my family. And we were gathered together at a park, doing some walking and sat down for a moment. And, at a, and my grandkids know that they're not supposed to gather together, we're just safe distancing. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my two-year-old granddaughter just came up and jumped on my lap. I was sitting in the grass and gave me a big hug. And the whole family went, oh no. And I looked at my daughter and she says, Dad, it's okay. And we realized and recognized that uh, after all the things going on with her other grandparents who have contracted COVID-19 and all the things we've been praying, she too has felt all that's going on. And it's almost as much as she just needed that extra hug of saying, it's okay, we got this, you are loved. And that's what I wanna to say to you this morning, jump into God's arms. Know that this Easter, you are loved. Trust him with your life. 
know that he are in his care and that don't peek, go fully into him. Go head on. Just say, Lord, on this Easter, I want, even though we're being social distanced, we don't have to be distant from you. And know that the triumph of the grave can be your triumph too, as we simply just turn our hearts and lives over to you on this Easter day. Let's pray. Jesus, would you hear our prayer? We thank you that we can experience all that you have, as we know that you love us and you have you have died for us and you live again. And because of that, may we experience your hope. May we experience your presence. May we experience what you have for us wherever we go. Whatever we do, may we share it with others. We know there's some really difficult moments around us and maybe moments ahead. But as we pause, may you guide us through all things as we experience this day in your name, in your presence. Because you have risen, we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. For those who have watched this early this morning on this Easter Sunday, remember at 1045, we will be gathering together um, via Zoom and sharing together in Holy Communion. God bless you and have a blessed Easter.